Love watching BBB during my BBB, the brand brand break. I actually realized earlier today, guys, even though there was no sunshine today, that there is another BBB in this household. And that is my big brown belly. <laughs> I'm very tanned, as you guys know. Unfortunately, also gained a couple of kilograms. So, so many BBBs all around. Uh, I cannot answer that. Night Phoenix is asking me for help on what to veto. Should I veto Grasbon or Neo Humanity? I cannot answer that. That's up to you, mate. I do not want to have any impact on how these best of fives play out. <laughs> Kalazur 3 0 is my prediction, but a 3 1 isn't out of the question. Well, Night Phoenix is a very motivated young man who plays a lot of StarCraft and does his absolute best to get ready for these matches. He wants to play every single weekend. That is unfortunately not something that we can do, but I do like to give him a decent amount of chances because he's the kind of guys that we want to run this event for. Motivated young StarCraft 2 players that want to get better and want to make that final jump to the upper echelon of StarCraft 2. Kalazur has been there for quite some time, has obviously been around the world, has been a pro gamer for a long time. Night Phoenix is working hard. Is he ready for the big boys yet? Well, we're about to find out. It's probably the toughest opponent that I gave him so far. But it should be a fun series, guys. I'm excited. I think it's going to be good. I made this matchup with confidence. Let's see if I was right. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. Night Phoenix is doing a serious amount of manaing his opponent right now. And I will explain the manaing after the intros. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who I got to hang out with on Friday. It was a lot of fun. The always sweet Brazilian Terran player who's living in the Netherlands, it's Team Liquid Skelazur. And in the top right side, he is trying to mana the hell out of his opponent. The Ukrainian Protoss currently living in Poland, it's Night Phoenix. Representing Hot Headed Gaming. So the manaing your opponent goes back to the early days of Wings of Liberty when StarCraft 2 just came out and mana was one of the best players in the European scene. And he would often play against the German Protosses, Hazuobs and Zocke. And whenever Mana would play Hazuobs and Zocke, he would be like, Oh man, you're so good, Hazu. Go easy on me. Oh no, I've got no chance, Zocke. Please go easy on me. Please let me win a map. And then every single time he would do that, he would actually end up winning the series. And I was living in Germany back then, so I spent a decent amount of time with Zocke and uh, Hazuobs. And at one point we were having a dinner and Hazu was like, Man... Mana is so fucking annoying. Every single time I play him, he's like, oh, go easy on me, be gentle. Oh, you're so good. And then we play and he two zeros me all the time. Like, he really needs to stop this stuff. And I started laughing because I thought it was pretty funny. The Muslim was there as well. And he's like, yeah, Mana does that to me as well. And he always beats me. And after that, we made it a thing. Manaing your opponent. Pretending that you have no chance. You're the massive underdog. But then when push comes to shove, you show up and you get the dub. And that's definitely what Night Phoenix is doing so far. Even after I gave him his opponent, he already said, Oh, it's going to be 3 0. No, no, no. You know it's not. It's just that these guys, they want easy matchups because there's guaranteed money. But that's not how we do it. The scout obviously is decent. Even though he lost his probe, he knows about the double gas, he knows about the Reaper, knows about the factory. So now we can start getting ready for the Reaper Reaper Hellion phase. We saw this earlier in our first best of five of the night. Those Reapers and Hellions did a lot of damage. Should not happen at this level. Mm. We are going to play uh, Adept into Stargate. I do hope that we get some shield batteries. I always think back of Zest whenever you see Terran openings like this, where you know that the Terran opening is not ultra economic. Like, don't make life too hard on yourself. Don't try to go for the super optimal defense of no battery, but just think that you're a god. No, get a battery. Battery in natural, make life easy. Force the Terran to find the damage in the main base. If they don't find it, you're already ahead. Phoenix. Could be Phoenix Colossus, guys. There could be a lot of Phoenix Colossus in this best of five. It's something that Night Phoenix already liked with 9 range Colossus. So with 10 range Colossus, it's a whole lot better. It's only two Reapers and a Hellion for uh, Kalazur. The follow-up is actually a quick Cyclone. I will never forget the best of five we once upon a time had in the early days of the BBB. Where I did Kalazur against Gerald. 
And honestly, I thought it was going to be a close series. Kalazur won 3-0 in like 20 minutes. Every game just ended with Cyclones, Marines, and a Medivac. Okay, against this stuff, you do really want to get a battery, though. Like, so far, the start is perfectly fine on the side of Night Phoenix, but now we do really need a battery, my friend. He doesn't know, guys. Doesn't know about the Cyclone. Does not know about the Marines that are being pumped out at the moment. Doesn't know about this Medivac that's already here. The gateway count is once. It's one gate, one Stargate. And that's gonna move out. Now, if the Marines are floating, this actually, in a weird way, is very good for Night Phoenix, guys. Because if the units are stuck inside of a Medivac, they get unloaded one by one. Just lift the Cyclone. Oh, he has no energy or what? He lets the shade finish up. This is chaos. But this move out in a weird way is perfect because obviously units inside of a medevac cannot fight. And sure, a couple of the adepts are falling, but he's buying a lot of time for himself. And time means that the robot can finish up. The fact that he's still not getting a shield battery I find absolutely insane, but who am I? Mate, please. Okay, maybe we don't need it. Maybe if the Immortal comes out, we actually don't need it. I legit find it crazy we don't have a battery, but... I guess we can get away with it because the Adepts caused a little bit of a chaos and made sure that this push did not arrive as quickly as Kalazur wanted it to arrive. We have a second Cyclone showing up. Phoenix's Stalkers and Adepts are just gonna go for it. He's lifting pretty much everything. There is not too much left on the ground right now fighting. And apparently the battery was not needed. Night Phoenix, guys. But a picture perfect hold in the end is gonna maybe get another cyclone there. The adapts can shade. Phoenixes lift one more cyclone. Get the medevac. Man, what a defense. Go! Kill it! Kill it! Get! Kill it! Get! Kill it! <laughs> okay, somehow he didn't get this one. Because the shades did not chase. We'll get this one. So he gets all but one cyclone. Yeah, that is an amazing start. I don't know why we're not expanding. I don't know why we're building a war prism either. Maybe Night Phoenix feels that this went so good that he can end it now. But this is a very clumsy army. I, I don't know if we can end it. I don't know if we can end it. I don't think we can. Oh, gets a couple of the Marines. He's gonna get in there. Gets the uh, Viking too. The Lock-Ons are dealing a lot of damage though. And the Phoenixes have just disappeared. We went from 5 Phoenix to 2. We went from 5 Phoenix to 1. Uh, one more Phoenix showed up. Uh, that wasn't it with the Phoenix movement. But we do still have a couple of Stalkers and an Immortal. Bit of a troll, because we had a beautiful amount of Phoenix there. What are we going to do now? Third CC is done. Oh, that was not necessary, guys. He smelled blood, but there really wasn't any blood. He's still going to go for it. Runs into the natural. Snipes the tank. Snipes the Cyclone. Now maybe use the War Prism to get that final Cyclone. Picks up the Immortal. Unload, unload, unload. Gets it, loses the War Prism though, and now these units are stuck. We might have to recall, or do we just want to lose everything? What a crazy game, what a crazy attack. He's now going to try to gun down the last few Marines, but Marines and SCVs are pretty good against Stalkers without Blink. If he wasn't as reckless as he was with the 5 Phoenix over here, maybe, maybe he could have ended it. Wait, why? We have another War Prism immediately. It's kind of odd to play Phoenix, Robo, but then have two War Prisms before minute 8. I'm gonna say that I have never seen this, and I generally mean it, but... Yeah, maybe we can just wipe in one more Stalker, try to pick up a few SCVs. Because normally the Phoenixes already fulfill the role of the War Prism. Bit of map presence, bit of scouting, get a couple SCVs. Okay, these two medevacs oh, might get revealed. I hope he pays attention. I don't know if he did. Night Phoenix. Did we see those two medevacs? If these two medevacs unload in the main base and the Colossus is not in the correct spot, that's really going to hurt. The Colossus is out though. The Marines are going to unload inside of the third base. We have a shield battery here. Colossus can obviously walk up this ramp. I think a Colossus should be fine. We have a couple of Adepts shade into the natural. There are two fights happening. Who's paying attention to what? Kalazoo is going to clean this up. One more Phoenix gets picked off. This is where if you Night Phoenix, you do really want to punish this kind of stuff. Okay. Still an 8 worker lead on the side of the Ukrainian Protoss. It's been a very bumpy ride so far. Sometimes we have very clean openings. On the side of a Protoss where it's just very defensive. 
focus on not taking any damage and try to get multiple Phoenix and Colossus out. This has been the complete opposite. Night Phoenix has been indeed hot headed video gaming. And it's all a little bit reckless. There are four Marauders out on the map. Four Marauders could be an issue for all these uh, Phoenix and especially the Stalkers. Near a battery, I think Night Phoenix's army is going to be fine. Away from a shield battery, I'm very concerned about it. There's five pylons being wiped in at once, by the way. That's also a lot. We're going to fly into a widow mine here? Yes, no, maybe? A zealot is going to give Night Phoenix the heads up that his army is here. The Warp Prism has once more warped, out, uh, warped in three zealots on the other side of the map. Three adepts. I don't know what's wrong with me. But I don't think these adapts are going to do a whole lot. It's not six adapts. I'm not really feeling this. I feel like this is all a pretty big investment. That it's just unlikely it's going to get a whole lot done. At least these three adapts did make it into the third base mineral line. And a couple of SCVs will fall. But that's still six adapts and a war prism. This Protoss army right now, I think it's good enough. Kellas are already on double starport. It's probably a man, guys, that has played a couple games so far against the 10 range Colossus and knows that just a few Vikings is probably not going to cut it. So very early double star point, I think, is the right way to play. Chaotic Star to the co-main event of the evening where it could have been disastrous for Night Phoenix. It could have been fantastic. In the end, it's all right. Vengeful Gore, you're one stupid comment away from being banned, by the way. Oh, shut up, mate. You're annoying. Nobody likes it. You're bothering me. You're bothering everyone. Viking count is quite high. Shield battery overcharge is good. That's a good save on the Colossus, by the way. Good save. Unfortunately, it is a single robo, not double robo, so you need to be incredibly careful with the fuel disruptors that you're building. Is this a better fight for Kalazur? I'm not totally certain. It's hard to get your stalkers in a very good spot if you don't have blink, but I kind of like this stalker positioning so far. And he does keep the Nexus alive, that's the most important thing. I would stop chasing here, by the way, Night Phoenix. The problem is for Night Phoenix, guys, that this is a playstyle that requires a lot of patience. But this man is not a very patient player. In PvP, he's basically always on the verge of all inning. In PvZ, I think he is somewhat patient, but maybe not as patient as he should be. And in this playstyle, to be this hyper aggressive is kind of crazy. Just wants to fight all the time. He is gonna fight while being up to four bases, but he just lost all of his Phoenix. The Viking count is quite high. We don't have plus two, we don't have blink. And uh, Kalazur is doing the right thing, and let's just walk away until the Colossus have died. And now all of a sudden the Terran army is pretty good. Can that Nova go off? It cannot. Why, mate? Why, do you, why are you there? It's super unnecessary for Night Phoenix after he just goes up to four bases. He's close to getting plus two and Blink to be there. Now Kalazur has lost a decent amount of units as well. So maybe he needs to be a little bit careful. Fighting in range of the immediate reinforcements. Look at the amount of money in the bank as well. We're gonna apparently die trying defending this base and the Zolts, they are doing their thing even without armor. Somehow they are good. We have a little EMP landing. The gateway count is at 8. I guess 8 Zolts at a time. It can make the difference. We have so many probes here at the third. But obviously this base wasn't exactly stabilized and very well protected. So it, it made sense that maybe it didn't send over all the probes yet. There's a widow mine here. He just wants to attack all the time. Maybe he's very paranoid about late game TVP. And he's just worried that if Kalazur gets close to maxing out that he cannot win, but it's kind of crazy to just attack over and over again with one or two robo units. Especially because he's got a good economy. He's got the bases, he's even going up to five bases, beginning a second robo. Blinks forward here with a bunch of stalkers, but the Marauder count is still quite high. We do have one more disruptor showing up. And that's gonna save at least a couple of our gateway units. Why so aggro? Maybe nervous? I don't know. Let's forward again. He's crazy. Kid is absolutely crazy. We are gonna go back into Colossus production, and I don't hate that. Because all the Vikings that Kalazur had once upon a time, they have died to all these stalkers. It's 
21, holy smokes. Okay, that's way more than I even thought it was. It's only a 14 minute game, guys. <laughs> it's a 14 minute game and 21 Vikings have died. It's a very awkward fight here for both players. The goals have shown up. And Ghost obviously very good against Zealots. Night Phoenix now at 90 workers. So he's definitely rich. But can we find a good fight? Can we find a fight that we like? Is there a Nova that can ever connect? This, this is definitely not the fight that we like so far. We're trying to buy some time for the Colossus to show up. Wouldn't hate a couple Chronos on the Robos. Because I feel like these Colossus have been in production forever. They are back though. And that should make a bit of a difference. It's single forge and getting plus three on stalkers and colossus is obviously awesome. But having a bunch of zealots. Okay, takes out the rocks. And that's so many matterfacts. I'm very concerned here for the Protoss army that does not have any armor upgrades. If Night Phoenix does not land a couple good novas or take a fight near a battery, he's not gonna win. And instead he blinks down a ramp. At least he stayed at range, and this time around he was able to disengage. Kid is crazy. <laughs> Kalazur is walking into a bit of a trap. I would love battery overcharge here on the side. I think that would be awesome. The 10 range Colossus doing its thing. Walking through a lot of Widow Mines here though. And oh my goodness. Widow Mines sniping multiple disruptors. Two disruptors going down to Widow Mines. Now that is an interaction you don't see very often at high level StarCraft. Apparently Night Phoenix does not believe in observers. Pretty useful against a man with 10 Widow Mines, I would say. He's just walking through all of them. This is not a great army to take out a planetary and EMP lands. Kalazur wants to surround this army and I think he will be able to get the surround. Oh no. Please, Rico, 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 please. Okay, he's gonna fight. I don't like it. Oh yeah, yeah. We have four Colossus. Well, the micro is good. We have 2,000 minerals as well in the bank. The micro is quite good here on the side of Night Phoenix. And the Viking count definitely not as high as it once upon a time was. Plus three Stalkers and Colossus getting max value pretty much. Maybe now we can get out of here with at least a couple of units. Stalkers gonna blink to the other side of the Liberation Zones. Gets one of the lips, gets the second one as well. Run away mate, please. Get five more gateways. Get some observers. We have observers. Cheering a little for the underdog. I don't know what the prediction settled for in the end. Kalazur obviously is the favorite, but Night Phoenix is showing us that this is obviously already competitive. It's, it's reckless, but it's very really good. She'll be able to clean up a lot of these mines. Kalazur knows about this army because of all these Widow Mines, and he's now rallying pretty much everything that he has to the top left side. 37 probes on this Nexus. That's a lot. <laughs> 37 is a lot, guys. And on the Widowmind fires at a couple of the Stalkers. Battery Overcharge is going to try to buy a little bit of time. And the Stalkers are here mostly just to scare away the army of Kalazur. Stalkers were obviously not ready to fight that. But if Kalazur sees that the Stalkers are there, maybe the Colossus are there. Maybe the Disruptors are there. That makes sense that he disengages. Kalazur throws down an EMP, kills one of the Observers. 90 probes is so many. 18 Stalkers, 2 Colossus, but the Viking count is getting up there again. I actually think that Kalazur's army is a whole lot better than Night Phoenix's army at the moment. And this is not the engagement that Night Phoenix was looking for. Does get a nice blink there, finally gets a couple of these Vikings, but he lost the only 2 Colossus he had left over. Kalazur meanwhile has expanded towards that 9 o'clock spot, also takes the center base. We are back to gateway units. It's a lot of gateway units, but it's gateway units without any armor upgrades. Nice Widow Mine shot there in the middle of all the Zealots. Disruptors will set up for the Widow Mines. Kind of funny, by the way, that Kalazur also only has plus one armor. Neither of these two players is believing in armor upgrades in this game. Yeah, we are back to two more Colossus. Viking count at nine. Nine Colossus may not be enough as Night Phoenix sees this center base and he says, Cool, not a planetary, I'll take it. Gets on top of it, kills it. That was the main, by the way, that floated over. So that's actually kind of a big pickup. We have a launch of DTs. Will the DTs be revealed? Yes. Can they blink? No. But they do morph into Archons. Unfortunately, very bad spot for the Colossus to recall. Oh no, and it's the recall that's really costing Night Phoenix here. Loses the Disruptors, loses the Colossus. The DTs have morphed successfully into Archons, but that was painful. Can he at least kill something here? Not really. Uh, what an unfortunate recall. I didn't hate the recall, just 
rough spot for the Colossus to spawn and the Disruptors. That went so good for Kalazur. Honestly, it went a little bit better than I think it was supposed to go. It is not going to disencourage Night Phoenix, though. Who just says, I've got an army. I believe I can attack. I want to attack. Night Phoenix has lost 6k resources more, but because he's been mining a little bit more throughout the game, that's unfortunate. He can sort of get away with it. But Diego never really had the Dream Army. And I do think now we're getting a lot closer to the Dream Army. Where it's not just... Oh, that Nova does not go off. Are you kidding me? That one will though, run. No, what? That's illegal. That's fucking illegal. Two Novas that are awfully close to exploding in the heart of the Terran army do not go off. The third one does, but that one is not as impactful as the other two would have been. And after 20 minutes of video gaming, it is Kalazur who gets the 1-0 lead. Jeez Louise. That was so close. Two Novas that I pretty much saw them go off. I was just wondering how many Terran units were going to go down there. In the end, not a single one went down. Oh, and that was right after, obviously, the unfortunate recall. Kalazur takes the 1-0 lead. But that was a pretty wild game of StarCraft. 19 minutes and 47 seconds. With two war prisms after a Phoenix opening before minute 7. And I, I mean this, guys. Keep an eye on the upcoming tournaments. And let me know if you ever see another game where the Protoss opens up with 6 Phoenix. But then also has two war prisms at minute 7. Like, <laughs> that's not even really a thing. But because the defense with the Adepts and the Stalkers and the Immortal was so good, I was like, okay, I kind of get the first War Prism. I think the second one was maybe a bit much. Fun game, though. I did enjoy it. Sounds like a ruddy build. No, I have no confidence in War Prisms and Phoenixes at the same time. Those units, they do not function very well with one another. Yeah, that was, a, that was a game, guys. That was a game. Apparently, we've been live for five hours on the dot. But it doesn't really feel like it. I've had fun today. Games are good. Let's go ahead and enjoy game two. Round two. Fight! That was the Raynor build. It's not, though, because Raynor talks about Robo into Stargate. For the people that don't know, Raynor also plays a lot of Protoss. And Raynor recently said that the best Protoss opening is not phoenix into robo but it's actually you go robo first and then you go stargate and clem actually backed up rainer's statement in saying that it's good now i don't trust either of them i don't trust rainer because i don't think he knows what he's talking about and i don't trust clem because clem is going to tell protoss players that he thinks something is good that's probably not good right but according to those two the robo into stargate is the build but that was not rainer's build because it was target into robo so. anyway Round two, top right side, guys. Ancient Sister and co-main event taking the 1-0 lead. A wild game, a very action-packed game, but very fun. Our Team Liquid, Terran player, was born in Brazil, lived in America, back to Brazil. Then lived in the Netherlands for a while, went to Asia a couple times. But he's back in the Netherlands. It's Kalazur. We all love Diego. He's hard not to love. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the man who was not happy with the opponent I gave him. But I think he put up a very good fight in game one. And I believe if you can just chill a couple times, like we don't always need to attack. But that's something that a lot of these young kids have. They are just overly aggressive. I think he can bring this one home. But obviously he needs to relax every now and then. Needs to slow down a game. Does not always need to be on the offensive. Especially not if he is seconds away from blink, seconds away from plus two. Just take a moment. But he's representing hot-headed gaming. So what else could we expect? It's Night Phoenix. It was previously known as a Sly Crab a while ago. but That's like a solid year ago. So I think a lot of you guys know him by Night Phoenix by now. Trigger says Phoenixes are the worst thing of all time in PvT and I will die on this hill. Now, that's definitely not a statement that I would support. I think Phoenix are good. But I don't know if I believe in the Robo into Phoenix. That I don't really believe in. But Phoenix into Robo, I do think is good. The Reaper hops into the main base. We're going to have a little bit of probe micro. Pulls a lot of probes, by the way. If we don't get the Reaper now, we're absolutely fuming. Oh, this is a bad start, guys. This is a bad, bad start. The Reaper gets a probe. Seven probes not mining. And somehow it gets out of there. And also got the scout on the Stargate. 
I would leave. If this was a ladder game, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I've seen enough. I know what I need to do in the PvT to win, and I cannot win this game anymore. Now, obviously, Night Phoenix is not going to do that. He will play Phoenix once more. Kalazur is going for what we like to call the Ryong. Barracks into expand, into factory, into two more barracks. The build that Ryong had a lot of success with, and I am Katowice 2021. Oh my goodness, the Adepts just shaded our position. Reaper shows up again. Night Phoenix will probably end up losing at least one more probe here. And then I really hope that's what it is. That is what it is. And adapts to really suck in dealing with Reapers, eh? This right here sums up my entire leather experience. That Reaper somehow killed three probes, guys. That's obviously just a bit too much. Now, at least one SCV did go down on the other side of the map. And one of the adapts got a bit of a scout. I would not be very happy if I was Night Phoenix here. Please get a battery, man. I know he didn't get a battery last game. And he kind of got away with it, but... Last game, I think we got a bit lucky that all of the units were inside of a medevac. And then obviously Terran players cannot drop the units one by one on top of a Protoss army because then they die one by one. If the units stay on the ground, we do really need a shield battery. But Night Phoenix says, no, we don't. Adapts are good. I've got a Phoenix. If you can lift the Cyclone and then the Adapts can just one-shot Marines. Yeah. Put an Immortal out soon as well. I don't know. I am concerned this pylon is going to get cancelled. Please don't. I don't know. Oh, okay. Galazur, his cyclone gets in range, gets a tiny lock on. Night Phoenix sees an army that he wants to fight. He's going to chase. Galazur is going to try to run to reinforcements. Another lock on gets broken. The adapt shade finishes up. And now we go. What are we going to lift? Immortal needs to shoot at cyclones at all costs. Nice micro on the Phoenix. Honestly, very nice micro on the Phoenix with a lot of Marines still left over. Phoenix is going to dive deep for one more Cyclone. It's a very weird, chaotic fight. In the end, I guess that went slightly better for Kalazur than it went for Night Phoenix. Now we're going to abuse High Ground Vision. Can he get at least that Cyclone then? We lift it. Okay. Loses a Phoenix. Gets the Cyclone. Saves the Immortal. We do not have a Robo Bay, though. Okay. Yeah, you have no battery. He's running it towards the battery to heal it up, but he has no battery. Can we lift the tank? If we lift the tank, we're Gucci. Okay, we're gonna lift the Marines. Then I guess stalk as a Marine. Do we have a barrier? Please tell me we have a barrier. He does have a barrier. Does he have enough DPS to kill the tank? Yes, he does. And these fights are so weird and chaotic between these two. <laughs> it feels like this is an experiment that has gone wrong in high-level gaming. Two guys that literally only know how to attack. And we are watching some of the weirdest early game fights in the history of competitive StarCraft 2. Steam is done right now. Shield battery is almost done. Phoenix is one of them gets picked off. Shield battery is going to get picked off. But the four stalkers will at least get every single marine. And actually, the battery lives. Kalazur probably has no idea what's happening here. And I'll be honest, neither do I. But after 6 minutes and 30 seconds, we do have a 3 base Protoss. We have a Robo Bay that goes down. A fourth gas that's been taken. And Kalazur is like, huh, well... My starboard is late, so I guess I can't do anything anymore. Now there should be some potential, guys, in these four phoenixes. But Night Phoenix might be worried about being dropped. He probably kind of lost track of what's happening in this game. <laughs> <laughs> chaos! Utter chaos in the first seven minutes of game two. But it... It worked out well. Legitimately nice micro. It's, it's pretty awkward to micro phoenixes and a mortal and an adept because they all need to go for different targets. They all work very differently when it comes to movement speed and range and the ability of graviton beam and the adept shading forward, cancelling shades. It's legit very awkward to control that, but I think Night Phoenix did pretty good. I feel Kalazur was shooting at one of his own buildings or units there for a split second. The adepts are not super important anymore. It's a real shame, guys, that Night Phoenix didn't know that this was barracks into factory into two more barracks. Because if he would have known that, all these phoenixes, they could have been on the other side of the map. They could have been lifting SCVs, maybe sniping a medevac that just popped out of a starport. He was worried about being dropped, but it was literally impossible to be dropped because there was no starport. 
And I think now he has kind of figured that out. But obviously now we need the Phoenixes defensively again. <laughs> it is a best of five. We are video gaming. Phoenixes spot the Metavex. Can get a couple shots off. Tank count is pretty decent by the way. Three tanks over here. Fourth tank just came out. Phoenix is looking for the freebies, but Kalazur's micro is good. At least uh, Night Phoenix forces the tanks to siege up very far away. We don't have charge yet. I don't know if you want to fight like this. No, I don't like this fight. I really don't like this fight. Uh, you cannot fight here, mate. Thermal Lens is only halfway done. Ooh, Kalazur. Whoa, that's a weird pickup. That's a super weird pickup. Now I think Night Phoenix should just go for this army immediately. He's gonna try chase. Please don't lose all your Phoenix, mate. Don't lose all your Phoenix. He is gonna win the fight on the right. How much damage do we take? Recall the Colossus. That's exactly what he's going to do. I don't know if that was a good move by Kalazur. To no, not the only the Colossus, mate. Not only the Colossus. That is not the recall. Back to back games. It's the recall that absolutely kills us. Not just the Colossus, mate. Oh. Why? <laughs> and GG gets called. Kalazur takes the 2 all lead. I wasn't certain about that drop. I was like, it kind of feels silly to give up on those three tanks that have a lot of potential. But Kalazur says, I'm okay with giving up on it. Drops a bunch of bio units in the main base. And Night Phoenix recalls just two naked Colossus on top of the bio units. Loses both of them, and that is game over. Maybe a misclick, I don't know. Obviously, there are two fights to take care of, right? The Phoenixes are chasing the bio units in the main base. The Stalkers, Immortal, and two Colossus are battling the three tanks and two Marauders or whatever is left over. Yeah. I don't know. That's painful. That's painful, though, because the game did not have to end there. It's also just such a shame that after he finally stabilized on three bases, if he just grabs the Phoenix and he sends them to the other side of the map, he can get 10 plus SCVs easily. And he gets a very good idea of what the follow-up is of Kalazur and what, what he needs to get ready for. But for like two minutes straight, he was worried about being Marine dropped or Widow Mine dropped. But none of that was happening because of the way that Kalazur opened up. But no. It is what it is. Round three, guys. Round three. <laughs> Fight. It is indeed a very, very action-packed TVP co-main event so far. This man has taken a 2 all lead. He is the veteran, he is the experienced one. It's Team Liquid's Kalazur. And in the top left side, the man who wants to play every single Friday. A young man from Ukraine, currently living in Poland. Hot-headed video gaming's Night Phoenix. Somehow, playing under the ID Meow. Some of you guys may have seen the pictures that were taken at Home Story Cup, where I was wearing cat ears, or Rainer was wearing cat ears. Basically, Night Phoenix showed up with some of these cat ears and he put them on everyone and took pictures of them. <laughs> he did it to me while I was playing poker, so I just kind of let him do it. Forgot about it. Was wearing cat ears for like two and a half hours while playing poker. But I believe it was the key to success that evening. All my bluffs worked. Because I did not think that anybody with uh, cat ears would bluff, but... Oh, the cat ears, they brought out the worst in me. Sarah was wearing the cat ears as well, yeah. Night Phoenix scouts once more and sees that the barracks is missing. Also sees that it's not one, but two refineries that have already been taken on the side of Kalazur and they are fully saturated. Now this is the kind of opening that if you scout it, you do really need to respect it. This is obviously very nice. I think he sees that factory going down at home. Last game, the defense against that uh, single Reaper wasn't the best. I can't blame him for it, because I also really hate chasing Reapers with the depths, but... Whoa, what is this? Okay. Now, this is something that we're going to have to prevent. There is a Zealot out, guys, but the Zealot is just running to the other side of the map. Night Phoenix has not expended yet. And he's just gone for double gate, now triple gate. So he's like, okay, if you want to make it weird, I'll make it ultra weird. So where Kalazur was supposed to be the aggressor, Night Phoenix says, no, 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 that's my role, mate. You're not going to be aggressive here. I'm going to be aggressive. Could this work? Like we, we need another probe, I think. For this to ever work, I do think you need to send another probe to the other side of the map. Because I do think that this pylon will eventually fall. 
This can get very, very uh, awkward. Well, the Adept is here, guys, and that Adept is going to be a bit of an issue. Three Reapers can easily kill uh, an Adept. Two Reapers are going to struggle with it a little bit, especially if there is also a Zealot in the mix. Cyclone is going to be the unit of choice for Kalazur. Adept does a pretty good job in running around. I don't know where that Zealot is. We are waiting for Warpgate to finish up. It's still going to take a little while. Kalazur. Ooh, Kalazur. Wow, that's so risky. Goes to the low ground. One more Adept is going to show up though. And should be able to at least get one Reaper, right? So the Reapers get the Zealot, get an Adept. I hope that this Adept... No, that's only one hit. One hit is not good enough. Cyclone is almost out. But we're about to warp in like three Stalkers, guys. Somehow this Gateway has produced an Adept too. I think Kalazur is in trouble. Kalazur is probably not expecting a whole bunch of Protoss units to be warped in his maze all of a sudden. It's a lot of Stalkers. And if the Cyclone dies... Kalazur is in all sorts of trouble. Night Phoenix, though. Oh my god, everything gets surrounded, though. And Big Gabriel has told us a long time ago that SCVs beat Stalkers, especially if they can surround them. Ah, uh, that was sloppy movement on the side of Night Phoenix, who's getting a lot of damage here, but he needs more than a lot of damage. He's a one base Protoss. Now it's double Cyclone. I think he had a chance there. Maybe we can get one more warp in. We do get one more warp in. One Stalker is going to die immediately, but it's still five Stalkers. I think we had one Reaper on the other side of the map. Don't get surrounded. Once the Cyclones, five Stalkers, can they get the Cyclone? What the hell is happening? I think that the Cyclone movement is good enough so far for Kalazur. His CC is done. Okay, oh, can he get, uh, get one? That's very big. Getting one of the Cyclones is big. Three more Stalkers get warped in. One more Stalker gets surrounded by SCVs. But a lot of the SCVs are low in HP. And Diego is about to lose all his SCVs. Night Phoenix has done it, guys. He's actually done it. The three gate pylon gateway in your face. And I think Kellis, well, okay, the tank might clean this up, but it's five SCVs. Okay, he's gonna wipe in more units. Uh, hello? Okay, now we are donating three more Stalkers. And now I believe in the turn. Can he get the Cyclone? Ah, okay, double kill in the end. Cyclone dies, Stalker dies. Hmm, I wouldn't have hated a few Zealots towards the end, rather than all these extra Stalkers. It's not two Orbitals yet, but it's gonna be two Orbitals in the near future. Six SCVs? I wouldn't say it's even. The Protoss is absolutely ahead. But it is a bit awkward, because you don't have a Twilight Console, you don't have a Phoenix, uh, or like a Stargate with Phoenixes, or you don't have a Robo. All you have is basic gateway units. And basic gateway units really suck. But obviously you can drop a Twilight. This is one of these very weird moments. And you guys are absolutely allowed to laugh at me. And Trigger, you're the loudest. You're allowed to be the loudest one out there. Because you're the highest level Protoss, I think, in the chat. But this is a moment, guys, where I would play double Twilight Council. <laughs> I would want Blink and Charge at the same time. So I think I would play double Twilight. <laughs> this is one of these one in a hundred unique scenario games. Where I think we can afford the double Twilight. Get Blink and Charge at the same time. We can micro. We can win a straight up fight. Obviously Twilight Robo is a better choice. but I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> It should be totally fine for Night Phoenix, guys. It really helped that Kalazur didn't have double orbital all along. I think this game would be actually kind of close if while all of that was happening, the orbital was done and gathering up energy and Kalazur would have had like three or four mules banked up. But since it was just a CC and it wasn't an orbital yet, I think Night Phoenix is still very, very far, far ahead. Definitely made a bit of a donation towards the end. I think we lost five extra Stalkers for one Cyclone, but... In the end, a uh, brilliant call. Diego is going to move out. And see, guys, this is why I would have liked the Double Twilight. Because then you have Blink soon to kite a little bit. Okay, he's just going to run in range of the tank. Gets the first tank, gets the second. And I think that should be good enough. Because Marines without Steam and Combat Shield can never win this game. Kalazur trying to make some magic happen with an early move out. But Night Phoenix is all over it. Getting the two tanks is massive. 
probably gonna eat a very big tank shot right now because he doesn't have high ground vision but Night Phoenix has never backed out of a fight just runs in range blinks into the natural into the dead zone of the tank gets all the marines and then he gets the tank and he prevents the 3-0 here in the co-main event a cool response scouted the proxy barracks scouted the full saturation on the gases and just said like no 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 you're not gonna attack me i'm the attacker i'm the one who's representing hot-headed gaming i will be attacking you he's uh Whis night phoenix is whispering me and he says at least it's not a 3-0 with a smiley face and i'm like it could have been a 3-0 in your favor mate just stay focused stay chill don't get too nervous like, I love Diego, and I'm definitely better friends with Kalazur than I am with Night Phoenix. But it's always nice to show a bit of love and support to the youngsters, right? For for them, it means more than for Kalazur, who's already been to BlizzCons, has participated in events in Europe, Asia, North America, Central America. Like, he's been there, done that. Night Phoenix is still a bit new to the scene. And then even if I'm better friends with Diego, I like to cheer around the underdog, especially because he's losing as well. Round four, fight! Top right side of our co-main event of the evening. Still up 2-1. But he's probably realizing by now that he's dealing with a pretty crazy Protoss. It is Team Liquid's Kalazur, the Blue Terran. Altitude, obviously the largest map we currently have in our map pool. We should see some more Phoenix, why not? In the bottom left side, we're looking at the main base of the youngster representing hot-headed gaming, the Ukrainian living in Poland. It's Night Phoenix. Who is he talking about, Law? I mean, I literally said who I was talking about. Kalazura is Diego. We have, I think, explained that 300,000 times. And the one who was whispering me is Night Phoenix, which I also said. So. I, I don't know how that was confusing to you, mate. I think that says more about you than it said about me and the way I was describing it. How can he be the underdog if he can use phoenixes? Because according to Trigger, phoenix suck in PvT and he will die on that hill. Who is that BlizzCon guy? That was me actually, I was there. All the BlizzCons. No, I got it. I'm slow today. You've been around for a while, mate. And I mean this in the nicest possible way, but I don't know if it's just today. But don't worry, mate. I'm getting older as well. I also have my slow days. I felt very slow yesterday. So, it comes with old age. Don't you worry about it. Kalazur has been to BlizzCon. Yeah. I think it was... Kalazur had the legendary game against Dark. I forgot the name of that map, but he did the uh, Medivac speed upgrade. And everyone was like, oh my god, we get to see it! And then the Medivacs flew very quick, and then they died very quick. And we're like, oh, Dark is pretty good. But that was one of the first times in pro broadcasted StarCraft 2 that we saw somebody use the Medivac speed upgrade. And it was basically Kalazur's upgrade for many years. So it's like, it's Kalazur's. <laughs> Forever praise for a game that he got lost. Ascension to Iron? That could be it. It was a green map. Top left, bottom right, I think. It was very big. Couple Zell Naga Watchtowers in the center. What do we got over here, guys? We have a marine into a reactor. Kellis are probably gonna drop a tech lab then as quickly as possible. On the, the no, he's gonna build a heli, and maybe the heli is to scout and then tech lab. Even if the map is very large, if Kalazor feels that his opponent is gonna play Phoenix, he will quite often make an early move out with cyclones and either a Viking or a medevac and a couple of marines. He does not seem to care too much about the size of the map. Don't think he really saw a whole lot there, but careful! Don't lose your depth, please. Don't lose your depth. He's gonna lose either. Hmm. The follow-up is Widow Mines, guys. Single Hellion into Widow Mines. And that makes me wonder: Are we gonna drop an armory as well? Kind of feel that if we wanna open up with Widow Mine drops against the man who has played Stargate in two out of three games so far, and with this one, it's three out of four. Are we gonna drop a quick armory then? I feel like without an armory, this shouldn't be too problematic for Night Phoenix. Yeah, okay. There is an armory. For the people who don't watch StarCraft 2 24-7, there is a very big difference between a Widowmine drop with an armory or without. 
If they don't have an armory, the widow mines fire once, and then the widow mines are revealed, so you can just clean it up. If there is an armory, the widow mines will be permanently cloaked. They have a little red laser coming out of their head, if they have a head. And that means you need either a revelation from the oracle, or an observer, or a cannon to detect them. Oh, that, that would have been so good. Oh my god, this is bad, guys, because the adepts are going to go to the other side of the map as well. He just, he cannot chill. The man cannot chill. I don't know why he plays Phoenix if all he wants to do is ever attack. We're about to have permanently cloaked Widowmine drop into the main base. No, there are some Widowmines here. Be careful. The Widowmines are going to fire at the Adepts. No, they get broken. Medivac drop is happening. That is... Oh, that's going to hurt. Minus seven probes, I think. No, it's not that bad. Okay, we pull. Now we're in the corner of the main. Night Phoenix just cannot chill. I don't know. It might work out. It feels so chaotic to do this against permanently cloaked widow mines, but there are barely any units on the side of Kalazur. Maybe we can drag friendly fire adept into SCVs. That's what he's trying to do. Not quite working. Oh my god, we missed massive shots in the main base. 14 probes have died. We need to clean up these mines, mate. We need to clean them up. Okay, at least kill that and then clean up the main. Please pull probes away from the main. Kalazur is annoying as he is. Oh, that's hurt. That hurts. No, don't lose the Observer. We've all lost the Observer because the Observer was above a probe. Okay. At least that shot didn't do anything. In the end, this went a lot better for Kalazur than it went for Night Phoenix. 16 probes going down. 8 SCVs on the side of the Terran. The nice thing about this, though, as a Protoss, is that you have three bases. And Terran doesn't really have a follow-up with this that they can kill you with immediately. It's not like 20 marines with stim, common shield, and plus one show up. That's not how the bolt works. But <laughs> he's going to take more damage because he cannot chill. I love how we kept the phoenixes at home on Ancient. <laughs> against a man who didn't have a starport. And now against someone who opened up with permanently cloaked with mines. He's like, you know what? I should harass. Here comes... Oh, we, I need to pull the probes away. It's four more Widow Mines. This is going to obviously really hurt our column. Just send it into the third base, please. We're going to drop two Widow Mines inside of the main as well. Okay. Oh, careful. Oh, careful. There's one Widow Mine that hasn't fired yet. It's chaos. It's scary. I hope we know there is an observer and he sees it. Okay. Didn't lose a lot of pros, but lost a lot of mining time. So this may not have looked like a success for Kalazur, but it absolutely is. Three probes and this amount of lost mining time. Yeah, that's a success. <laughs> Night Phoenix needs a Robo Bay ASAP. We cannot win this game with just... Oh my god, he has a War Prism again. Why? We found the most aggressive Protoss ever. We're gonna attack with six Phoenix. Three Stalkers and Adapted and Immortal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that that's not going to work. Even though Kalazu's army right now is maybe not that intimidating. So maybe this is the way to at least find a good fight. Get some damage done. And then we transition. This is so crazy. Kalazu is going to be very surprised as well. Once he sees his army over there, the orbital is going to take a lot of damage. Is there a world where the stalkers... Okay, he's going to... No, no, careful with the war prism. Oh my goodness. War prism almost died. You cannot get the immortal here or the orbital. War Prism almost died with Stalkers and the Immortal inside of it. It's a shame that it didn't land, actually. If it would have landed... Like, if... No, careful, Night Phoenix. Okay. Kalazur is now going to take a fight here, which... I don't know if that's really necessary. If he waits for these upgrades to kick in, this army sucks. Kalazur, I don't think he needs to fight here. But he doesn't know what we know. He doesn't know that he's still 13 workers ahead. And he says, nope, I do not think that that Protoss army is very good. And the target fire there by the Marines is very solid. Even before Combat Shield, before Stim, Kalazur wipes the floor with that army. It was an unnecessary fight and he still gets away with it. And that means that this is over. This game is going to end here because now Stim is done. And that means the Immortal dies, the Stalkers die, the Phoenixes die. That was very well done by Kalazur. He could have waited for a split second because he's literally 15 workers ahead. He didn't wait. Target fire of the Marines was very good. Target fire of the Protoss army wasn't that great. And unfortunately, that's going to be it, guys. A very chaotic co-main event today. Kalazur, the favorite on paper. I think it's safe to say that he delivered. 
Even though he found himself in a couple of scenarios that I'm sure he was a bit uncomfortable with. We're going to try to drag the Widowmine shot into the Terran army. But Kalazur wasn't born last night. He saw that move coming from a mile away. On Burrows the Widowmine, kills the Phoenixes. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a series, guys. That was chaos. That was all over the shop. It was, I liked a lot of things in this best of five. A few things were a bit painful. Like the recall on Royal Blood was, I think, just unlucky. Uh, the recall on Ancient, obviously that's a mistake that's made in the heat of the moment. And this final game, yeah, moving out against Cloak with a Mind Drops. That can work out, maybe, but most of the time that works out better for the Terran than it works out for the Protoss. And then Night Phoenix banked on the fact that there wouldn't be a second wave. There wouldn't be another medevac full of Widow Mines. Unfortunately, there wasn't uh, at that point. It, I think it was kind of over. Then the move out is crazy. But I don't really hate it because maybe if he plays it normal from there, he's always dead. So trying to fight an army right before Steam and Combat Shield, that's good. But I think he got a bit unlucky that he wasn't able to kill the Orbiter. If he kills the Orbiter, he probably recalls. Then he's happy and he can go home. Maybe we have a game. But the Orbital was making its way over to the location, didn't land yet, so the Immortal couldn't fire at it, and the Phoenixes and Stalkers didn't have enough DPS. And then obviously Kalazur knew what he was dealing with. So. It is what it is. Fun series though. GG's. Let's go ahead and settle that uh, prediction. And then get a prediction for the main event of the evening. We've got one more best of five coming your way on this Friday. I think that's going to be a banger. 78% of you guys believe that the veteran was going to get it done. And he did get it done. Congratulations to Kalazur for the 100 bucks. Night Phoenix still gets 25 though. Because there are only winners in the big rainbows. Some just win a little bit more than others. Final series of the night, guys. Main event, Trigger versus Lambo. Main event, BBB number 35. Best of five. Is it the man on fire representing Vasilisk? Or will it be... The German veteran who's been there, done that, Lambo. I'll give you guys 50 minutes. We're going to take a tiny break. That should be fine. See you guys real soon. Thank you to Basilisk for giving 10 more subs to the channel. We've obviously had a very fun Friday. Where you guys were very generous to me in the beginning of the evening. And then at 6 p.m. you all stop. And you're like, now we let it Basilisk take over. They take care of it, Roddy. And it's working. I hope you guys are having fun. I've been enjoying the games. I think it's been a good series. It seems that Lambo and Trigger are very eager beavers. Uh, we are gonna need three minutes. They have already done their vetoes. They have already hosted. I let them know that uh, we need three minutes. BBB is the same age as Roddy now. I'm 36, mate. 